Bon, on le mange après, non Ok, on va passer sur le cœur. Oh oui Ça va, my friend? Ça Comment ça va? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Comment ça va? On est sur les 80 000. C'est lourd! So we are at the Aswan Quarry. Uh, I'm taking a group to show them the unfinished obelisk. The official theory does not make sense. Uh, not because we want to contradict everything, but simply because it's not possible. Because they say, uh, we'll see later on, uh, that they used just pounding of dollarite on the obelisk to shape it and the only thing is that all over the place we see remnants of extractions that have nothing to do with this. You need to understand how hard granite is. If you want to work on granite you need something harder. However here on the extraction areas we see the granite in such a way that it looks like they were able to melt it, shape it, scoop it just like ice cream. Anyone who is honest with themselves has no clue how they could have done that. Other places on the quarry, you see the small holes where they supposedly put wood, then they got the wood swollen with water and then everything would explode and then you got your block. Long story short, this is, this is what they say. But here there are no holes. It's impossible that they did it the way they say they did. It looks like an ice cream bucket and they just cooped it out of it. Qu'est-ce que ça t'inspire, Tatiana? So we just asked the guy. He said, yeah, there are tens of thousands of people working on the extraction. I just asked, where were they physically? I'm not sure where they can fit. His answer was, all over the place. The best thing about my trips is that all the guides are always looking around thinking, who are these people? What are they doing? Because we always look at the things that nobody else is looking at, taking pictures of stuff that nobody's taking pictures of. So now they're using the supposed old technique that they used to shape the obelisk. Look how ridiculous that is. Basically everything that's said is not possible and it's not just because we have an alternative theory or approach on all that, but it's simply because it just doesn't add up. I'm gonna show you something. If you just think that those people were pounding on granite. Please write a comment below and tell me how they did uh, what we're gonna see because I don't have an answer. Obviously everyone does but I don't because I try to be logical, stick to facts. Tens of thousands of people where I don't know but there were tens of thousands of people pounding hard on granite to accomplish this. So here we clearly see that they were not pounding, but they used some kind of technology that we don't know of or that was higher than ours today, because today we wouldn't be able to reproduce this. This is granite. And the theory is that people were pounding here to create that. How, why? Because now I'm on my knees on the floor, so it doesn't make any sense. Like some kind of bulldozer just got in and took out whatever they had to take out. Here we're gonna walk and take them to a, a real Nubian house. Whether you travel to Egypt, Peru, Indonesia, Iceland, Budapest, everywhere. There's only one thing you should care about. Make sure that each and every time you live the life like a local. Pretty hard to do most of the times, that's absolutely true. But whenever you have a chance, grab it and run with it. We made 
ready to Elephantine Island. Still in Aswan, we're now visiting a temple that's not really famous, where not too many people go. As you can see, we're almost alone. I mean, we're basically alone. There are just the 14 of us. And now I'm going to show to my group something very interesting that highlights the fact that long, long time ago, pre-dynastic, before the pharaoh, some very high ancient technology has been used in order to achieve amazing accomplishments. Here it is. Look at the scale. This is one solid block of granite, not made by hand with uh, bronze chisels. Look at the scale. I just asked our guide how they built it and they said copper tools. And when you consider uh, the hardness of copper and granite, it's like saying that you're breaking a window uh, with some butter or jam. And I'm not even kidding. Look how smooth that is. Non, c'est hallucinant. Ah, mais tu vas là-bas, il y a plein de pierres cassées, il y a un numéro sur chaque. Et on marche au milieu, donc c'est normal. This is legitimately the smoothest things I've ever touched. And this is thousands and thousands of years old. It really is just like it's coming out of the factory. Mind blowing, truly. Everybody agrees on that. Guides are starting, starting to yell because they say it's forbidden. Ouais, cinq minutes, cinq minutes. Bah ouais, mais moi je dis oui. But one thing is for sure, we are on one of the key sites in all Egypt. I'm trying to show you something harder than creating a sharp edge. And this is as smooth as it can get. And before we go, I'm gonna show you something quick. The inside. This is absolutely amazing. And now I'm taking the group to a very special place of mine. I'm not gonna say I discovered, but uh, besides myself and the pictures that I took of it, I never saw it anywhere else. And it really shows how three different civilizations with three different techniques of stone work were here one after the other. <laughs> It does warm my heart to see so many boats full of people because people are starting finally to come back to Egypt because they understood that it's not unsafe, it's not whatever the media wants you to think and it's just a magical, mystical, amazing country. Sunset. Oh, oh. For the sunset, I'm not sure where I should put the camera. What about this? How's it going? Yeah. How was the day? Yeah. He just got a swim. How cold is the water? Like 16 degrees? Yeah. He's a nutcase. Is this the best place in Egypt or what? Yeah. yeah. For the moment. No. For the moment. For the moment. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing that I like more than knowing that my guys are having the time of their life. Yeah, I'm gonna go back to the other spot to catch the sunset. here at the bazaar in Aswan. This is not for tourists, this is where the real people buy their real stuff that they really use on the real days. I don't know how to say it, but long story short, this is the real stuff. Hey Steven, do you like popcorn? Yeah. You like popcorn? Yeah. Giant baskets of popcorn. <laughs> And it's free! <laughs> Bon, tout de suite. Okay, for me, if you need in help, okay? All right. Take care for my friend. Et bonne nuit. Bonne nuit. Ça va ou...